it's Sam. I'm making a quick video here showing the current um, retrograde um, and um, astrological uh, situation. So this is my astrology app that has the real-time um, sky. And you can see why there are so many retrograde planets. Um, if we look at the zodiac from the top, planets are retrograde when they're closest to the Earth. And you can see visually why and how this happens. Mercury appears to be retrograde now because he's moving faster. You see he started to go retrograde. This is Mercury right here, about right at this point. And then as we start to go, because he moves faster and gets closer, this is what happens when you have the Mercury retrograde cycle. He's going like this, and you can see he then is at his deepest retrograde and his fastest when he crosses in front. We just had that Mercury transit in front of the Sun. This was exactly the way it happened. And you saw Mercury, it only took Mercury about nine hours to cross the disk of the Sun. But at that time, he was, of course, closest to the Earth. That was his deepest retrograde. So he's retrograde and combust because his rays are also lost in the Sun. That compared with Venus, who is also pretty combust right now, as I record this on May the 11th, you see Venus is also lost in the rays of the sun and what's called combust, but it's this combustion that has her on the opposite side of the sun. So Mercury was retrograded combust because it passed between the sun and the earth, and Venus is just combust because it's completely on the other side of the sun. And that's the way most planets are when they're combust. Only Venus and Mercury can be retrograde and combust, which means lost in the sun and moving backwards. Every other planet, when it is combust, it's opposite the sun. Like, for example, if I move the Earth around this way, we're going to see at this point Jupiter is very combust because it's behind the sun. Then at this time... Saturn is very combust because it's behind the Sun. And then at this time, Mars is very combust because it's behind the Sun and what have you. So this is how retrograde and combustion work um, relative to the planets. Now, as you also see right now, here's Mars and here's the Earth. You may have heard that Mars is going to be closer to the Earth this year than at any time in recent memory. I don't remember the exact years but it's going to be very close and you see that's going to happen around around the end of May May 20th or something and at that time Venus is also its most combust so we're going to have Mars being its brightest and its most retrograde and Venus being its most combust right around the same time around the end of May into early June I don't have the dates right off the top of my head but I think it's like you know March 22nd to the 25th or something is when Mars is going to be at exact, you know, at its exact closeness and Venus at its exact opposition um, will be in early June. So the way we see this in a chart, in the astrology chart, is like this. Or here, this is May 11th, and you can see that Saturn and Mars are both retrograde like we just saw um, and Venus is also opposite the Sun you see the Sun is 27 Venus is 20 so you see and again these are measured from the center of the earth to the center of the Sun and the center of Venus um, so you see it was about that far away now if we advance this a week two weeks now we see we're around the end of of May and you'd see this is exact opposite yeah Mars is 6 degrees 30 seconds here the sun is 10 degrees, so if we go back a couple days, this is the exact um, the exact opposition. This is when the planet is the most retrograde and the, and the closest to the Earth. Here we see on May 22nd, I was right, March is, I'm sorry, Mars is 7 degrees, the sun is 7 degrees. So this is when Mars is like the closest to the Earth. There on March 22nd, Venus is now 4 degrees, the sun is 7 degrees. So when Venus is joined the sun, the exact degree, that's when it's completely opposite and the most combust. So we said that was early June and it winds up being 16, 17, yeah, like right here. Venus 18, well, actually, yeah, see this is June the 3rd. 
We go one day, 19. Venus and the Sun move at about the same pace. It means that Venus and the Earth, their orbits are about the same. Venus is a little faster. So we see here on June 5th, Venus is 21, Sun is 21, and they're exact, and Venus is the most combust directly behind the Sun at that time. It was June 5th, which was the date that I froze at, that makes it look about the same. These apps are a little deceptive sometimes. But, um, so March 22nd and June 5th. So that, psych that, that period in between, this is what you can see, you know, this is what you can see how, you know, Mars is very close, Venus is very far away. Then, of course, we have to take into account the signs as well. Both of the signs, Venus is going to be in Taurus, where it's strong, and Mars is actually in Scorpio. If we flip this around, we can see the constellations. That's why this app is so great. We can see the constellation. Mars is actually in Scorpio, if you line it up. Yeah, Venus, Mars. Mars is actually Scorpio, Libra, right on the end. It's hovering on the end, but it's actually at the last degrees of Scorpio, when he's, um, you know, when he's um, uh, closest to the Earth. It's at the very, I'm sorry, the last degrees of L Libra, the early degrees of Scorpio. Um, when he goes, you know, when he's closest to the Earth or in early June, this is when he backs up and goes into Scorpio. Or, I'm sorry, and goes into Libra. As we see, Mars is two degrees, um, you know, 52 seconds of uh, Scorpio, when Venus is directly opposite the Sun. I should say when Venus is directly behind the Sun. Excuse me for that binary dyslexia. But it's fascinating to look at the solar system this way and to really understand the astronomy. You can also see the other thing that happens around that time, what's going to happen. You know, you see Saturn and the Earth a little later, like, for instance, um, when Venus is directly opposite the Sun, Saturn is also closest to the Earth at around the same time. So we not only have a direct Saturn opposition, you know, Saturn is directly opposite Venus at the same time Venus is on the other side of the Sun. So um, these, all of these things play in at the same time. It happens at the same degree where Saturn is closest to the Earth. So at that time, Mars and Saturn are very close to the Earth, and Venus is very far away from the Earth. So we may expect that time in early June to be, you know, a time of a lot of Saturn-Mars energy and a lot of Venus, um, you know, in a detriment. Um, because, um, you know, the planets that are closer to the Earth are obviously going to have a greater sort of impact at that time. Um, and, you know, anytime you get Saturn opposite the Sun, you know, again, when you get Saturn opposite the Sun, it's because the Earth is in between. It's very important to try to understand these things astrologically, and it's the reason that I use the South Indian chart. As you can see, this South Indian chart is almost exactly the same layout as the sky we were just looking at. You just imagine that the Earth is in the center, and this is the, you know, these are the constellations that go around the Earth. And again, so I say this all the time, some of my students are like, oh, but North Indian, blah, blah, blah. This is something that you can't dispute. This is an astronomically correct chart. North Indian chart doesn't have anything to do with the sky, really. It's, it's broken down by houses, but seeing the planets and realizing that the planets are going around a central point, which is the Earth, exactly the way it looks to us, is important. So we see on this day when Venus and the Sun are exact, Saturn is exactly opposite. Pretty much. Saturn is 1850, which is like 19 degrees, and Venus and the Sun are 21. And so if we go back to look at the sky, we'll see that, you know, we just put the Earth here in the middle. We see that again right here. So it's very interesting to, to know, you know, what's happening in the sky, why things are playing out the way they are. And of course, when you start noticing these kinds of things, it it takes astrology out of some flat piece of paper or some quote chart that you're looking at and brings it into the living sky and these forces that are moving and that are always in motion. So I hope you enjoyed this.